Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and this is the day that we've been waiting for. Ripple has officially filed its preliminary legal response uh, to the SEC uh, to, against their claims. And the legal document itself, I admittedly have not read yet. It's 93 pages, but that's okay for the purpose of this video because uh, Stu Alderodi, who is a Ripple employee, uh, he has written up a summary, effectively, is what of what's in there. So I'll have a more thorough breakdown, I'm sure, at some point. But I just wanted to get the word out because uh, this this was announced this this blog by Stuart Alderodi just a, about a half hour ago, 11:52 uh, a.m. my time. This is Central Standard Time. I'm in the Midwest in the United States. As I record this, it is 12:25 p.m. And so I did read through. Uh, his response just one time, and I just wanted to make sure I got this out as quickly as possible, so I stopped what I'm doing in my workday, which I can do because I'm my own boss, thankfully, I'm a business owner, uh, so I stopped my workday so that I could uh, share with you what is known to this point, get this video out, and then again, we'll have a more thorough breakdown in the future, but even this, you're going to love what they have to say. I think they've got a, an incredibly strong defense, even just uh, like on the surface, you're just starting to get into this information here, it's pretty clear that um, they've, they're, what they're stating here, I mean, they, they got some teeth here, basically. And a lot of it, frankly, is stuff that I've kind of discussed on the channel anyway. It's just really nice to finally see something from Ripple. I know a lot of people wanted this stuff sooner, but you know, all good things in time. They can't rush a, you know, such a, an important legal process. And you gotta make sure you got your ducks in a row, that you're, you know, every single sentence that you're wearing, that you gotta make sure it's precise. Like, I can just, I can only imagine the amount of time and effort that went into preparing this 93 page document. So um, I do want to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say I write. I also do not have a legal background. I'm not offering you advice, uh, period. Just understand that I'm a dude on the internet that calls himself Moon Lambo and may or may not be wearing pants. So just keep that in mind. If you ever think about taking advice from me, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this. This is this title, the SEC Update Preliminary Ripple Response. Here's the note I sent. Oh, and by the way, I want to mention too, this is this is written by Stuart Alderody. Um, here's the note I sent to Ripple employees today regarding Ripple's preliminary legal response to the SEC's complaint. Hi, Ripple team. Since the SEC filed its complaint at the end of December, its side of the story has been the only one shared publicly. Our initial response was finally filed today. The answer is a legal document filed publicly, which, as the name suggests, is our official answer to the allegations in the SEC's complaint. Although it does not fully outline our strategy, or to come as it plays out in court, it's our first opportunity to start to set the record straight. Although the legal process is slow, we are working to get this resolved as quickly as possible to bring clarity to the broader market. Moving quickly is important, as you know, since the SEC filed its complaint, XRP lost almost half of its market value, causing retail holders of XRP with no connection to Ripple, the very people the SEC purports to protect, to suffer billions of dollars in losses. What's more, part of the SEC's mission is to maintain orderly markets, and yet their overreach created havoc in the market. And so th think about this, this is a point that I brought up on this channel before. So there's a claim at $1.3 billion sales of, of unregistered securities between Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. <clears throat> they caused many billions beyond, I don't, I don't remember what the numbers off the top of my head, I don't know if it was over 10 billion, but whatever it is, certainly the market cap crash uh, or decreased by, by well over that as the price of XRP came down. And so they cause substantially more harm. It's like, do, like that's why I'd ask, like, do you feel that you're protected by these SEC actions? Because I don't. I, f I, feel like, I feel like the SEC is attacking XRP holders, if anything. This is not healthy. This is not good. And, you know, are they going to are they going to give us like even if they got something where they're going to give it to the XRP holders anyway? Doubt it. Anyway, the answer is a long legal document, but I'll summarize the main points below. It looks similar to the summary of our Wells submission, which some of you have probably read. And here's a subheading. XRP is not an investment contract. The only question in this case is a technical one, whether or not Ripple's limited distributions of XRP were an investment contract. To be clear, there are no allegations of fraud, misrepresentation, etc. 
While we've seen some Twitter commentators suggest this is a non-fraud slash fraud case, a first-year law student can tell you that there is no such thing. It's misleading and irresponsible, not to mention silly, to even suggest otherwise. Turning to what matters. In our answer, we explain why there is no investment contract. Number one, XRP is a virtual currency and thus outside the SEC's jurisdiction. Two, Ripple has never entered a contract for an investment with any holders of XRP. Three, Ripple never held an ICO, never offered future tokens to raise money, and has no relationship with the vast majority of XRP holders. Four, holding XRP does not mean a person receives a portion of Ripple's revenue or profits. Five, Ripple's XRP sales amounted to far less than 1% of the massive XRP market that has grown over the last eight years. If I could pause and just stress this point. You're talking about less than 1%, and so that number, $1.3 billion in sales, and I understand they lumped some of uh, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson's sales in theirs, but still vast majority certainly Ripple. And so that's why I, I got to point out. The um, the SEC claim against Ripple, it was clearly designed to elicit an emotional response because there were no fraud allegations. And the fact that Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson were selling some XRP has nothing to do with whether or not XRP is a security. It was purely to elicit emotional responses, and it worked. There are all sorts of people, uh, I don't know if it's most people, but some people in the XRP community outright upset. And I wasn't because I'm like, look, th this is part of their compensation package. If they want to, they want to sell. It's just like having, if you're a, the CEO of stock in a company, you can be long the company and sell some of the stock here. And it was such a small percentage that it was never going to, in any measurable way, impact the price of XRP at, at less than one percent of, of volume. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no way that you're going to be able to measure that. Ripple has always been a responsible steward of the XRP ecosystem to the extent that they have any sort of impact, and which, you know, in terms of market price, they hold a bunch of XRP. But I knew that. To me, that was appealing, getting in as an XRP holder, whereas Bitcoin maxi trolls say it's some sort of scary bad thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. I look at it completely differently, and I don't. And whether or not you think Brad Garlinghouse is greedy, like I'm not convinced he's greedy. You can try and sell me on that, but even if you could convince me that he was being greedy, I still don't care, because as long as Ripple is being a responsible steward of the XRP ecosystem and building out the internet of value and positioning XRP as a bridge currency, I don't care. I functionally don't care. If somebody else gets rich, that doesn't hurt me. Somebody else being rich does not hurt me. I, as long as I have my opportunity to, to earn, you know, or to have, oh, ideally, hopefully, you know, sell XRP at a much higher price in the future, as long as I have the opportunity for that to potentially happen, I'm good. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to be an adult about this. Anyway, number six. The XRP ledger on which XRP actually moves is completely decentralized. The SEC ignores uh, the economic reality of an XRP transaction. Number seven. Ripple's XRP holdings do not create an investment contract any more than De Beers' holdings convert diamonds into securities. Now, that is a brilliant analogy. De <laughs> Let me read that again. Ripple's XRP holdings do not create an investment contract any more than De Beers' holdings, holdings convert diamonds into securities. And it's, it, it reminds me of the uh, analogy that Greg Kidd brought up, too, um, who owns a... well. He, he owns a company that has a stake in like cryptocurrency exchange uphold and, and ripple the company actually, but um, and he holds a bunch of XRP. And it, it's it's like, can you not tell the difference between gold and a gold mine? You know, it just made me think of that as well, which I think is also a brilliant point. It's it's a similar analogy anyway. But <clears throat> excuse me. And then there's a subheading: the SEC is out of step domestically and globally. Before this case. No securities regulator in the world has claimed that transactions in XRP must also be registered as securities, and correctly so. The functionality and liquidity of XRP are wholly incompatible with securities regulation. Requiring XRP's registration as a security would impair its main utility. Exactly. It's, it, and see, that's the same reason that you don't use your Amazon stock to purchase a smoothie. Like it's it does it doesn't work. There's all sorts of tax implications. It would muddy the waters, and so and that's something I brought up before on the channel. And it, it's it's but it's it's not just that it would be horrible. It's also incorrect to call XRP a security for so many reasons. But let's continue now. In fact, regulators in the United States, the Department of Justice and FinCEN specifically, determined in 2015 and 2020 that XRP is a virtual currency. 
and have since regulated it as such. Basically, on its way out, the Trump administration sought to undo the determination that XRP was a virtual currency made during the Obama administration. Globally, the same is true of regulators. The UK's Financial Conduct Authority and regulators in Singapore and Japan have concluded XRP is a virtual currency or a crypto asset and not a security. With its complaint, the SEC is asking the court to contradict the findings of the agency's peers in the U.S., and worldwide. <clears throat> and look, I've seen some people say that, um, just on Twitter and all over the internet, that, uh, you know, that XRP could be both a virtual currency and a security. And I don't know what that even looks like. Can a square be a circle? Like, seriously, how, how can it be two different, those two different things? Because the regulatory implications are at odds against each other. So I don't know how, from a legal perspective, it could be one uh, um, or, or be both from rather instead of just one or the other. It doesn't make any sense here. So it does indeed seem to, to be the case that uh, the, the SEC is trying to undo what was set in place previously uh, with those departments I cited declaring um, XRP a virtual currency. But anyway, they have this subheading now. Uh, the SEC is picking winners and losers. Although XRP is the most efficient digital asset for global payments, benefiting consumers around the world, and is the most environmentally sustainable crypto, there is no principal distinction between XRP's current function and that of Bitcoin or Ethereum. How does the SEC explain telling the public that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities, then turning around and saying the opposite is true for XRP? What's particularly interesting here, by the way, actually, I want to stop right there. I'm so glad they pointed that out because I've been I've been saying that on the channel as well. It's like, how could they then not go after Ethereum? Because they happen to have verbally stated it's a non-binding statement, but they did, the, somebody from the SEC did verbally state that Ethereum, they don't view it as a security. It's not binding, so they could go after Ethereum too, which would be scary, scary for Ethereum holders if this doesn't go for well for Ripple and XRP. But I, I'm so happy to see the SEC called out for this because functionally, the Ethereum Foundation, they certainly sold a bunch of Ethereum. They've just been less transparent than Ripple. You know, I don't know how much Ethereum the Ethereum Foundation holds. Do you? Have they ever stated that? I'm not aware. I know that they've been selling. They've, they have publicly stated that. So why is that not a security? Doesn't make any damn sense. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. What's particularly interesting here is that at one point, the SEC claimed that ETH might have been born a security, but eventually evolved into a non-security, offering no guidance or framework for this determination. We're just asking for the rules to be stated clearly and for those rules to be applied consistently across the board. We send a FOIA request to the SEC asking for more information about how the determination was made in hopes of gaining more clarity on how they came to the initial conclusion above ETH. By the way, then that's that's something that's so repulsive about this whole thing. They've been doing everything they can, staying in touch with the SEC. Please tell us more. What do we have to do to ensure that we're compliant? They offered no guidance for years and years and years. And then on the way out the door, Jay Clayton, the asshat, decided to uh, to, to just like ruin Christmas for everybody and and, uh, and legally go after Ripple for selling an unregistered security. It's just it's offensive the fact that they got the gall to do this. <sighs> really grinds my gears. All right, moving on. Furthermore, XRP is a great deal more environmentally friendly than Bitcoin and Ethereum, considering it avoids the mining process. The power needed to mine and validate Bitcoin transactions leaves an enormous carbon footprint compared to the modest amount of energy consumed by XRP transactions. That must matter from a policy perspective. Next section. The SEC has distorted the facts. The complaint filed by the SEC is full of cherry-picked quotes taken out of context and draws conclusions that are unsupported by both the facts and the law. Through our response, we start to clarify the record. While we can't get into all of the specifics in this format, that will happen as the case progresses, you'll see we denied many of the SEC's allegations. In time, you will see why. I'll share a quote from one of our outside counsel with his evaluation of the case. I think summarizes the situation quite well. And here's the quote. The SEC's case is unprecedented and ill-conceived. The SEC has ignored XRP's clear status as a virtual currency, contradicting not only the findings of other U.S. regulatory agencies, but also international regulatory regimes. Over the last eight years, the XRP market, independent of Ripple's activities, had grown to be grown to a, a massive scale, trading on over 200 exchanges worldwide. 
the SEC is now stretching the concept of an investment contract beyond its breaking point. We look forward to presenting our case in court. And that was stated by Andrew Ceresny uh, of the, the firm Debevoise and Plimpton. And Andrew Ceresny, of course, he is a former SEC director. Think about that. Former SEC director says the SEC has it wrong. Anyway, it's wrapped up by stating here, I want to thank Team Legal for all of their hard work on this and, on behalf of Brad, recognize the broader Ripple team for staying focused on executing against our vision while we take this case to the courts. Best, Stu. Well worded, Stu. Fantastic. It's so great to hear this. And so I'm going to get this video up, but I can't wait to, when I have a little bit of time later today, start to dig into this 93-page document, um, especially since he stated that um, they are denying all sorts of allegations that were in there. And so that's what we were waiting. Like, understand, the SEC making allegations against Ripple doesn't mean that they're guilty of them. It doesn't mean it's reality. And so finally, Ripple has a chance to shoot back a bit, and I can't wait to dig through this massive document and find out what aspects of the SEC claims they are denying to be true that's going to be fascinating so there's going to be a lot to break down in the coming days and weeks but uh interesting is it not so i continue to remain confident that uh you know bad law will not pass as a result of this i'm just going to remain confident i, I think that ripple's on the right side of this thing and uh, you know once it's all said and done ripple and xrp will be better for it even if it's messy along the way and it's not even if it is messy but no matter how messy it gets i think ultimately you know, well, it'll be proven that Ripple's on the right side of the law here, in particular as it pertains to whether or not XRP is a security. But um, I will wrap it up there. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging with me to the end. You are a rock star. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.